Microsoft, somebody from Microsoft on the stage talking to me today about this education and the challenge that it brings to us and our children. I'll start by saying I sort of stand here as a mum. I'm a mum of two children, Sophie, who's 10, and Lucy, who's seven. And I am committed to their education and want to be part of that. And it frustrates me when my little seven-year-old says to me, Mum, how far ahead is the future? And I go, well, wow, it's here today, and yet I see them operating in a school that is designed for the 19th century. But I'm also here as a business person, okay, because, believe it or not, we are looking at a world where we do need new skills. We call them 21st century skills. And how is that working today with the education system that we have? Is it producing work-ready kids, kids who can come out and be successful and re realise their potential? And that's sort of the lens that I'm going to talk to you about, um, talk through you today. So I mentioned I have two children. Um, they're gorgeous, by the way. Couldn't make it today, much dis to their disappointment. But when I go to school and I see them learn, I see that it's, you know, the traditional bricks and mortar. It's pen and paper. There's a few computers at the back. You know, the teacher is there, and a little bit like your mum, she's got a lot of demands on her hands. And my mother also was a teacher, a nun as well, a nun and a teacher. She's not anymore, obviously, as you can, you can see. Uh, just had to clarify that. So, and my father worked in a university. And so I was surrounded as a kid by two parents who valued and appreciated the education system. But they could not engage in my learning like I could potentially engage in my child's learning today. Yet, it doesn't happen. What happens is, I wait for that school report that you mentioned, or that NAP plan, which probably the teachers have been teaching for the test. And that's my one insight, potentially, to my child's progress and their learning. And I know that the teacher you know, has been doing class lessons and working with my children, but she's working in a very stretched environment. And I think there's real challenges for them that potentially the tools that they need to help generate an education that is work ready with 21st century skills, those things aren't there today. And so I believe that my children deserve a better education to prepare them for the future. I think your children deserve it. I think children everywhere deserve the tools of the trade to help them be successful. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I, how I see that today. You can see from these two images, I've talked about this, this 19th century design, and I probably Stephen might even talk to this more coming up, about the role of the classroom, the bricks and mortar, the pen and the paper. And yet the other image on this page is the image of the modern workplace. Let me share with you how we are working now in Microsoft in Australia. I don't have an office. I don't have a desk. I have lots of different collaboration spaces. It's called activity-based working. Lots of different ways that I can go and do the different tasks that I need to do in my world and for my job. And what it takes is quite a big cultural change that says work is no longer a place you go but a thing you do. Apply that to education, they go to school. They don't go to school, they need an education. Imagine if we took that world and tipped it on its head and said how could our children learn in a different way? And how can we make sure when they're going to school, they're getting the skills then at the school that really take them out into the workplace? So I wonder if our system is failing us and failing our kids because we've got 18% youth unemployment. 18%. That is a failing of the system. And I believe that we have a responsibility. Because if we don't do it and take it and change it, who will? And if we don't do it now, when is it going to happen? So if you stand on the stage with me maybe and think that you're in the same place that says we do need to reimagine the world of education, and I'm a believer, obviously, that technology can make a place in that. What could that look like? What could the future of education be like for our kids? Now, I will say, obviously, I work for Microsoft. What I'm about to say is my caveat. When I use the word technology, I don't want you to think it's Microsoft I'm talking about. Okay? I'm talking technology broadly, both um, partners that we work with and competitors. Okay? So I'm being agnostic in the term of technology for this discussion. So if you think about how technology could deliver on its promise, let's think about it from a couple of different angles. What could the school be? What could the student experience be? What could the teacher experience be? And what could be experience for those of you and for me as a parent? Let me start with the school. Bricks, mortar, pen, paper still dominate the classroom. But imagine a world where, as a student, my, my school was virtual and everything was 
online and, you know, I would get my learning plan and I could pull down the different activities that would support me in my learning. And I'd have access to the right teachers at the right time in my learning. Does it sound a little far out there that actually I'm not sitting in the classroom like I might today? This is occurring already. If you look in Florida, there's the Florida Virtual School where there are no bricks and mortar involved in this school and every student learns virtually at their own pace in a way that is personalised to the individual. The world is changing the way schools are looking and the construct of a school. If you think about it from the teacher's perspective, the teachers today, it's a little bit like this, you know, the teacher's at the front of the class and you're there and you've got your pen and paper and they are, you know, the sage on the stage, not the guide on the side. But let's think about how that could work differently. Or let's talk about a little bit how it is today and then what it's different. The teacher in my daughter's class gives the kids a little maths piece of paper and says, here's your maths lesson, go fill that out, and when you've finished, come and pass that back to me. And so Sophie will do her little maths equations, et cetera, and when she's struggling, let's just hope she's brave enough to put up her arm and say, I'm not sure how to do this, and the teacher can engage. It's the best case scenario. But many kids don't. And then they give the piece of paper to the teacher, and then the teacher at some point later in the day that night marks it up, and she's got to try and remember that Sophie did, oh, okay on these, but actually I think she's struggling in this particular area. And hopefully next time, and it's maths time in class, she remembers that Sophie's not doing so well on that particular element. That's how it's working for my kids today. Imagine instead that at the time of the day, if it was just, this was maths time, that actually the kids were doing their lesson, but they were choosing the activity of their choice to support their learning style to do the lesson. And they're able to pull down the activity that they could take advantage. And the teacher, instead of working in this, you know, maybe in 120, 1 to 30 model, where they're trying to say, hey, how can I you know, intervene or help and coach? They can use technology to see how every child is doing at that time. They can see which kids actually are doing great and they can uh, you know, give them access maybe to some other activities to stretch and accelerate their learning. They can see that my daughter Sophie maybe is struggling with something and they can intervene at the time, at the moment she needs that help. Not later, not trying to remember when that is. That's the environment I want for my daughter. That's the environment I want for your child to get the help they need when they need it. And the shame is that technology exists today so that Sophie and your kids can have that help. Um, the other thing is, you know, we talk a lot about personalised learning, you know, about this student. But actually, like in the workplace, everybody has strengths and weaknesses, including our teachers. Imagine a world where actually teaching is no longer, you know, I'm teaching English to this class at this time, but I'm working with a team of teachers. We're working together, leveraging our strengths and weaknesses to help make sure that we give the kids the best environment. So let's say now we're back in that virtual school or we're working, you know, across the class, and as, I, as I'm, you know, pulling down my activity and I'm struggling with this activity, I will know, oh, which teachers are subject matter experts in this area, and I can immediately go to the teacher who has that level of expertise and they're there for me versus actually my maths teacher may not be strong in that particular element. Suddenly team teaching can become a reality and that is existing today too. If you go up to the Gold Coast to Varsity College, they're doing team teaching today, leveraging the strengths of all the teachers to help the kids have the best educational experience. So I think we can really change the teacher's experience. And interesting, James and I did not compare notes but I think his comments around you know, the eco-natives, it's really interesting. I think the next generation, absolutely, I see them wanting to solve the world's problems, look at it, and that, and that change to resources is really um, insightful, I thought. And so when I think about 21st century skills for our kids, okay, I don't hire for trigonometry and all these other things. I hire for cross-group collaboration. Can somebody work in a team to solve a problem? Can they um, do the problem solving I need? Can they simplify? Can they be creative and innovative? Which is a little bit what this conference is about. Those are the skills that I want to hire for. Those are the things that we need in our business. And so when I see how technology can enable mm. those types of learning for our kids, I think that's incredible. Deforest action actually is generated by some kids, okay? They were starting to get concerned about um, rainforests, the habitats, the, the implications on the orangutans. 
They started in one school and it's gone global. They've now got over 65,000 members. They've raised over $83,000 and they're really trying to build an awareness for what's happening with our forests and to the habitat. It's an incredible, incredible story of what kids can do when they collaborate. Okay, and this is a great example of it. I don't think that they could have done this, you know, in a single school by themselves or without technology. That's the difference. When the magic of these two things come together, the creativity, the innovation, the technology James talked about, I think that's when magic happens at school and in the workplace. The last area I talk about is, is the view from the parent. So um, I already talked about you know, my two girls and the experience they have. I'm a working mum and I travel a bit. I live in Sydney. I haven't been home for a couple of nights, heading back later. Um, last night I was on the phone with my 10-year-old who um, was asking me who was most important, Obama or the Queen. <laughs> and uh, it's a true story. Uh, look, it's a little difficult to have that sort of discussion. I'm just thinking, but they'd been talking about Obama's visit at school, et cetera, and <laughs> I was trying to ha have the debate in a, in a sort of interesting way with her and asking her what she thought. But it was, a great, it, it was a shame for me that I have to only engage in those certain moments with her around her learning, because that's a learning opportunity. You know, talking about democracy, talking about history, those are the learning moments that happen all the time with your kids. And so I just reiterated the point to me that as a parent, I want to be able to engage with her throughout the day. You know, I should be able to get online at the office and see where she is, you know, in her, in her learning, engage with her teacher, as I said earlier. But it's not just that. I thought about how things change, you know, for other Australians. And I was hearing about a principal recently at a school in Townsville. A lot of the parents in that community have to go off to the mines. And so they're quite disconnected from their kids and their education. This principal is now tweeting, you know, as, not while he's driving, of course. Um, but he is pre he's talking about what's going on in the school community, how um, the parents can, you know, stay connected, who did what at sport. And it's just using technology, I think, in a really simple but impactful way to try and connect um, with the parents. The richness of technology to actually be able to extend that experience to sort of vision that I shared with you earlier exists today. And I think it's just such a shame that parents can't engage and support their child in the learning journey that they're on as much as we potentially could. So we talked, as, as I think forward, I think about the 18% of youth unemployment. I think about economic growth for Australia, and I, I believe productivity is such a big part of how we drive our economic growth going forward. And I think people and technology are the two things that are going to drive that. And if we do not help our kids come out of the education system to be able to drive the innovation, drive the disruption that we need to drive productivity, I fear Australia will be left behind. And I want to leave the world in a better place than I found it, and I believe our kids want to do the same. So what have we got to do? I think in some ways we've got to unlearn everything that we have learned, as Yoda said. And We've got to take on the education system. We've got to drive the cultural changes. We've got to drive the different level of creativity that, can, that our kids can really get their hands around. And I was speaking to Narelle just outside. We're talking about controls, and it struck me, you know, in the question before, there's so many controls in school and in the workplace. Unless we really flip the education system and the model on its head to remove the controls and enable the 21st century learning and enable the collaboration, I don't think we're going to have the innovation that we've had historically. When I, when I look into history and some of the biggest and amazing inventions, they came from creative thinking. And that doesn't necessarily happen in a controlled environment. So I believe we've got to give our kids the tools. We've got to make a difference. And as I said earlier, if we don't do it, who's going to? And if we don't do it now, when is it going to happen? Thank you.